This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This is a video on erosion and in particular looking at gravity, mass wasting and mass movement. And it's part one. So in this uh, first part, we're going to look at the effects of gravity and the, uh, the effects of gravity on the ground and surface and the crust. Look at the different definitions that are associated with these uh, types of movements. Um, caused mostly by gravity and look at what a trigger is or a thing that is going to be a catalyst or uh, initiate the movement of the material and look at different types and just introduce mass movements uh, as a topic. So to get to the bottom of erosion and this form or version of erosion or basically moving um, rock from location to location. So erosion is the, the removal, the transportation, the movement of weathered material, right? So that's erosion. But how does gravity move um, this material or transport this material? So let's look. You have our planet, okay? Big, nice, oblate cephaloid sphere. And you have this force, this force of gravity or gravitational attraction. And it is basically going towards the center of the Earth. Okay, so this is our surface, this is our crust, atmosphere, and the gravity is basically attracting everything towards the center of mass. So anything with mass has gravity. And as the Earth is a very large object, matter, mass, it exerts the largest fo uh, force of gravity. So we are under the force consistently of gravity on this planet. And the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second and squared. This is acceleration. So anything you throw up in the air that is not going to exceed escape velocity will eventually come back down through the force of gravity. Now, that also works with with our uh, surface. Now, obviously, the Earth's surface is uh, in small amounts uh, flat, like certain plateaus or various valleys. But generally, the Earth has a wide range of different slopes, hills, gradients, and inclines or declines, and the Earth's surface is pretty much not going to be flat for uh, a long distance. Um, so there are definitely changes in the relief and the landscape, which is right here. The relief and landscape, so what the, the shape of the landscape. We're looking at our surface right here, the crust. And we have our slope and our gradient as well. Now the gradient is the measure or the degree of the incline or uh, decline which is the slope. So the forces that are acting upon the rock, let's say this surface starts to get weathered and you have, um, so you have cracks and some, some joints and some joint sets and joint systems starting to form on this slope just to natural weathering. And you have the force of gravity. Okay, so I'm going to put the F G, which is force of gravity, which is consistent, okay? And you also have, let's say you have a piece of rock that has been exposed right here. Piece of rock right here. And so here is my rock, rock material right there. And you have the weight of, or well, weight and the weight is caused by the force of gravity, but you also have what's called the normal force. So force N, so normal force, the force exerted uh, against the, um, the surface at a certain vector or vector. Now, a vector is the direction and the speed of direction. OK, so then you have also the force, this force right here going parallel to the slope gradient. And this is called the shear force, or FS for short. So we have FG, FN for force of normal, and we have FS 
for the shear force. And this shear force is important because the force of gravity is consistent. Now, the rock is going to move based on if the shear force is greater than the normal force exerted on the material onto the slope because force gravity so if the shear force is greater this rock material will move down slope due to the force of gravity and various other factors come into play with the shear force but that's basically what happens and this down slope this downward movement caused initially by the force of gravity is what we're looking at today so in essence you have the classic gravity which exerts the force which equals the weight which is the force of gravity plus the mass of the object in this case we're discussing the rocky material on the Earth's surface and the potential movement of that material down slope or downhill okay um, versus our lovely friction which is again a measure of you know the um, the energy uh, between the object and the surface which is the force uh, normal force exerted so friction versus gravity our lovely um, nice comparison of what's going to happen and if that material is going to move downhill is based on these two parameters so erosion is going to be the movement okay the removal in theory you do have a lot of weathering that takes place concurrently with erosion so the movement there we go so this links into both mass movement and mass wasting now what are these two now mass movement this is your very generic term to describe any movement downhill or down slope now this can also be used with mass wasting now it depends on which country you're in which textbook you read or journal article but these kind of terms can be interchangeable so we can uh move between them but mass wasting really uh actually in the u.s is the term that is used to uh be a very general term as well but in particular mass wasting is also a term for any movement of material uh, that's going down slope which is which, based on the speed or velocity of the the motion and generally generally this is fast so any amount of material moving down the slope which is done quickly is usually defined as mass wasting other slower um, motions and slower methods would be classed as mass movement as more of a generic term so now we've got the types of material or rocky material that is going to be moved by gravity and different types of mass wasting or mass movement so you've got the regular soil okay you've got the different horizons the different thickness and all of the uh, organic material and minerals and rocks going with it then you've got the actual bedrock the lower beneath layer usually beneath the soil that is usually going to be a solid layer which the soil actually is derived from then you have what's called regolith which is a, um, a certain thickness of just uh, bits of rock that sit or are positioned above the bedrock but are not part of soil so this could be like a rocky outcrop that has been weathered over time but you've got these three main types of rocky material now they come in different classifications how do we classify these so you have consolidated versus unconsolidated so consolidated is a usually one piece of rocky material that could be all of regolith soil plus bedrock all together could just be bedrock or just simple regolith or just simple soil depends on the environment and the factors and the the uh what's happening but one solid piece now it moves as a whole 
and it's usually a large or larger amount okay and it could move in different stages and speeds it could move all together depend on the slope and the conditions so the material the sediment is going to usually stick together so you're looking again at the friction component as well and it's not loose so all these different terms to explain it now another term to explain consolidated is going to be called coherent in geology coherent means the same sort of thing which means a single unit of material now unconsolidated is pretty much the opposite of consolidated so you've got a loose um, not very uh, stuck together you have again the friction component of more um, part or sections of rock which can move at different times and locations and obviously speeds can also be introduced or looked at as fragments this would also be termed incoherent so we've established that gravity is uh, the driving force behind mass movement and mass wasting and the movement of material down slope however there are other what's called triggers that can initiate or start or uh, develop a mass moving event or mass moving method so the first type is uh, that can trigger a landslide or a mass movement. It's called over oversteepened. Basically, you have this uh, landscape, right? This relief, and you have, let's say, a regular slope or gradient, and let's say for various reasons, some natural and some uh, human induced, you're going to have a change in that gradient slope. So let's say this part of the hill or, or slope has been removed for a certain reason and it now becomes a lot steeper in a certain section, thus putting more pressure and allowing this area to have a, a steeper gradient and have an increased chance, increased chance opportunity to have a mass wasting. Next trigger is water, obviously. So we got precip. Precipitation, we have the, obviously the climate, which is it related to obviously the gradient, the material that the water is going to infiltrate or percolate through, whether it's going to be regolith, soil, and the composition of soil. So the composition of that material is vital to how um, the water is going to either stay and the amount of uh, porosity. So usually the increased precip okay of various um, phase changes and states of matter is going to decrease the pore space and the porosity which will increase the weight and this will eventually basically increase the rate or the ability for the particles no matter how big or small they are, particles uh, to move under the force of gravity. So this is a major trigger um, that uh, can occur in different uh, slope gradients, different environments, uh, maybe arid uh, conditions also uh, due to flash flooding. If there's any clays present in the soil in particular, the water is actually going to lubricate the clay and allow movement to be a lot more efficient within that material. Now, the next one is the removal of vegetation. So this can either be a natural or naturally occurring um, process. So for example, a uh, very large forest fire, which is common in certain areas of the Western United States, Australia, or even Turkey uh, in recent uh, seasons and summers due to the increased heat. Uh, heat waves and dryness of the environment um, then you have obviously the more devastating effect of 
let's say, uh, humans actively removing um, various uh, ecosystems and biomes to make way for their uh, processes. So you've got, obviously, you know, a large influence on the environment. So what does this do? The vegetation and the root system is going to provide various benefits for the materials. Benefits being water retention, nutrients to keep the soil quality. We're looking at uh, binding and holding the soil or even regolith in certain areas. And as much as, as um, size may be, even the bedrock, even the bedrock in some root systems uh, can be held in place through the trees and vegetation. So this natural anchoring effect by the trees or shrubs or even grasses can enable the uh, the slope to to be stable. However, if you obviously remove that vegetation, you're going to create a unstable environment where that anchoring system is no longer there. Last one is the natural disasters. So the main one that comes to mind is earthquakes. Let's put EQ for short. Earthquakes. Now, the, um, the elastic and seismic energy going through the crust uh, can loosen, can damage, create joints, create new faults and fractures, uh, extensive fractures and, and various joints, and to increase bedding planes to severely um, disrupt the strength of the slope. This can be very uh, quick, but very, very uh, devastating for the crust. can also have uh, volcanoes. Now, volcanoes, when they erupt in certain styles and certain directions with certain kinds of magma and viscosities and gas content, you can have a very large landslide like the one experienced at Mount St. Helens in Washington State in 1980 in the US where the lateral blast of the volcano created a landslide that was humongous and fortunately uh, for scientists was caught on camera but unfortunately for uh, some scientists caught too close uh, to the eruption on that day uh, unfortunately lost their lives, but we were fortunate enough to catch it on camera and to be able to use that as a great way to um, uh, expedite and increase our knowledge of earthquakes and magma and eruptions. Oh, sorry, volcanoes and eruptions. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.